it's coolant day today and I'd like to share some tips with regards to servicing coolant in an Infiniti M56. It is my long held belief that Nissan V8 engines are some of the simplest engines when it comes to servicing coolant, specifically when it comes to burping air. And let me show you some of the key points to be watching out for. So in these vehicles, there are four points, four different entry points or exit points you'll be paying attention to. There's the radiator cap right here. This one goes onto the filler neck, right? And as it says in the in the name, this is where you fill the coolant system uh, through. This one here is your reservoir, coolant reservoir. Might have other different names, but this is where the excess coolant, once you have enough coolant in your system, this is it's used as a buffer, basically. It's a buffering reservoir, buffering container. When fluid volume increases in the system, it overflows in here. And when the coolant cools down, it sucks it back into the system. That's why you have this here. Then, because this the whole coolant system is so convoluted between, think about the, the engine itself, the radiator over here, you have so many different nooks and crannies. If you were to just chug water down here, you might trap, you will hear it bubbling as you pour water in or as you pour coolant in, and that is a sign that air is escaping because nature abhors a vacuum. For that reason, we have to burp the air. And usually they tell you to burp air from the highest point of your system, which makes sense, right? Whenever you turn this, turn a bottle, for example, you can see that the air is always at the top. Air always goes to the top, right? So for that reason, we have a bleeder port over here. People might be familiar with this bleeder T because they're known to fail, <laughs> they crack. There's an upgraded metal connection that you can use and Ideally, they tell you to, Nissan and Infinity tell you that the best way to uh, fill your coolant system and burp it of air is to have your vehicle on level ground. Because during that time, these are the two highest points of the, of the coolant system. This one here, and you can lift it up, and this one as well. This one is really close to the heater core, so that also helps with that. And now, that's a little baffling. That thing I just said about the vehicle being level. Traditionally, people usually tell you that when you're burping air out of your coolant, you're supposed to raise the front end of your vehicle to make sure that the nose is as high as possible and then just keep filling it. In principle, I understand the principle. It's, it's sound, but in this case, it's actually counterproductive to do that. Reason being, this, I call this a, a radiator cap. Typically, they're mounted right on the radiator. And for that reason, the only escape you have in a traditional and an old school system is through that cap right there or, or here. But during service, you just have the cap. So although by design, it's already supposed to be pretty high, people raise it all the way up again, based on this principle right here, right? Water always goes down and air always goes to the top. So when you, when you raise it this way, right, all the water that you have in the system goes down into the engine and then the air bubble goes to the radiator. Here the problem is, as you can see, the radiator is already much lower than that and than the other one. So that means that this is not really your highest point. And when you start raising your vehicle this way to have it up, you might end up causing an airlock unless unless you you find a way to raise it up but still somehow keep this as the highest at which point why why are you even doing that right and then there's yet another part that kind of messes with that whole principle and that's why if you do it right if you do it when it's flat everything works out perfectly but if you try to start tilting the vehicle things just go a little you know out of hand the other thing is that in most radiators the inlet tube to the radiator usually meets it at the top spot, right? Right at the top corner. And that would make sense so that when you fill water, when you fill the radiator with water, once it gets to this tube at the corner and it starts going there, you know that the radiator is full. This one here though, look at this. So the radiator stops right around here. But look at the tube. The tube is about two or three inches lower. Can you see that? That's where the tube goes. In this case, it's now working against you in that if you were to just, again, pour in coolant a little too fast, 
you might end up uh, filling coolant on this in this inlet tube and it would start climbing but you still have an air pocket over here okay so that air pocket somehow needs to be burped and for that reason there is a fourth port over here and it's right here usually have this bleeder screw over here now this is at the topmost uh, corner you know highest point of the radiator and usually people know about this one because when that gasket fails it starts spraying coolant backwards and your timing cover can get splashed in white or sometimes your air filter box as well so that's one thing you can either replace a gasket or just tighten it quarter turn and yeah so it's pretty simple I'll, I'll see the video is pretty long as is maybe I'll make a part one and part two but what you do and I buy genuine coolant I mean how often do you have to replace coolant anyway right and what I do is I've opened all those ports pour it in here well at the same time keeping an eye down there this stuff is expensive so once oh there you go it's already it's already flowing down there so I'm guaranteed that my radiator is full so I'm going to plug this I was I was lucky I like using wide flatheads seems like the Phillips heads always strip something okay not too tight just nice enough it's a it's a rubber gasket so we're not gonna stress it so this part is full all right now we're gonna keep filling up the system until this gets full and then we'll see how it does on the back there a lot of space this is exactly what I was saying you know where the spillage happens might fool you because we still have quite a lot of capacity okay that's full in this case oh it's still kind of popping and bubbling I, I I it was pretty fast the way I did it so here wow the vehicle is so far tilted that there's nothing here nothing at all can you see this see what happens when I go down and up I'm playing with the highest point in the in the system I'll let it be for now but I'd like to pour some coolant in here knowing that I don't have coolant in the back I'm going to put a little extra in here I'll probably have it all the way to max I know it's going to suck it up in the system and as the system runs it's going to push air out through it wherever it can again this is going to be the highest point when it's normally running and then that air is going to get pushed out this way and when the when the coolant contracts the volume contracts it's going to suck back from the bottom it's going to be sucking up coolant so let me put my put my things away so i can kind of concentrate on this part now and then we can i'll give you guys an update later okay i've put coolant up to the max level more or less okay so coolant up to the max level i usually don't do that i usually have it right at the halfway point but in this case i already know that i'm shorting coolant because of that the fact that this one does not have any coolant coming out of it i know it's not all the way full and as you can see in here it seems like something's you know it's still going down just a little bit so i know i'm lacking it a little bit but i would love i would love to be able to drive the vehicle so that i can i mean i could roll it down the hill but there's not much control when you do that i'd love to drive it out of here and then let it circulate through the system while i check for leaks and the like and then i can park it on flat ground at my own convenience and then we can do the process again I snuck out to get a glimpse of it. I was mainly interested in the level in the coolant reservoir. And what do you know? I left the coolant at max and it's now at the mid line. So it's sucked up quite a good amount of coolant. And again, no surprise because 
there was a gap there was an obvious gap whenever I was filling up the 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 coolant system with the with the nose down so right now it's not all the way cold it's still kind of warm I trust that for the most part it's not going to spray out or anything but I don't know I mean it's almost midnight you know what let's let's do this let's make this fun because you guys already know what exactly what I'm doing so what I'm going to do right now is try to open this again it's not burning me I can put my the back of my hand against any one of these metal pieces air Not too far, not far at all, but I have a feeling I'm hiding a deficiency, not so much here. Does that walnut matter? Oh my goodness. Not anymore, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Let me go to the back there. Once I open this, you'll see what happens to this level. Okay, we're ready. I just broke that loose. I'm turning it. Something might happen, something might not. Uh, not as dramatic as I thought it was gonna be. Do you see that? Coolant is right up there, right up there. And so is that. So good thing, good news is that I wasn't too off, too far off with regards to the coolant level. And when you have this vehicle flat, as you can see, this and this are pretty much at the same spot. I can lift this up a little bit. When I do, watch what happens in here. And if I lower it. So interesting. What I can do though, sometimes what you can do is I can fill this up or I can fill this up. Ideally, you're supposed to do this, fill this up till this overflows and then you can rest assured that you're, you're all the way there. But sometimes if I don't want to make a mess, what I do is I push this down. It's floating right there, right? It's right on the brim. sealed it so i know that's good then i can come here and i could add a little bit of coolant in here in the neck and i am going to do that but also in consideration i'm going to add some in here in the reservoir till it gets to right this part right here this line is between the min and max and that's usually a good enough compromise in that when when it gets hot it's going to rise up to max and no more and when it cools down it's going to sit right there okay ideally i like it right in the middle some people might want it elsewhere but it just works best for me so just just a little here just a little okay Whatever's overflowing there is going into the reservoir through the bottom. I'm going I'm going to have to put the phone down just so I can do this with both hands carefully. And then I'll bring the phone up again. All done here. I've added coolant and it's up to the the line in between right here. It was much easier when I put the light here. I could see it very clearly on the side. You see the difference? Maybe, maybe not. There's another flashlight. This one is reflecting weirdly on the side, but just take it from me. So there's enough coolant here. Then I tighten that. Let's wipe that. Just want it to be as dry as possible when we make our comparisons. Then do not forget to do this. It's bad news when you run a vehicle without the radiator cap. Ask me how I know. So 
Okay. We are good to go.